Hey guys, welcome to the Speak Strength Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Wendley. I'm here today with Mr. Edwin Beeks. It's been about 20 years since I've seen Mr. Edwin Beeks, other than what's mm-hmm. online. We went to high school together, wrestled, played some football. You played baseball too, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, you played baseball. Uh, after we finished high school, didn't really see each other other than what was happening online. Over the last few years, I've kind of followed what he's been doing. He started a business, started motivational speaking, and I thought I'd ask him to hop on a Speak Strength podcast so we can see what he's got, see if he's got any nuggets of information that he can pass on our way. Uh, so, Edwin, before we get going, anything that you'd like to you'd like to say? Uh, first, just giving the honor and glory to God, man. You know, he makes all this, you know, possible, makes it possible for us to, to be here and Thanks to you for uh, you know reaching out for me, allowing me to do this. I'm glad we could do this. I'm glad technology makes it possible, man. <laughs> yep. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about your business first, man. So the last three or four years or so, you've been working on establishing a brand new company that you and your wife decided to start together. Tell me a little bit how that got started. What was your motivation behind starting a business? Okay. Uh, so the motivation behind starting a business, um, I knew I've always wanted to own something, but just never known quite what it was or right. what I could own. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but the way we got it started and I say we, and I got to kind of like, you know, segue and introduce my wife, you know, uh, my, my best friend, my biggest cheerleader, uh, the batter to my pancakes, the icing <laughs> on my cake, uh, my, my, my everything, man, you know, so, well, she she attended some uh, women's empowerment uh, meeting at uh-huh. church one night, and a young lady told her about you know a cleaning business that she had. I think it was residential, but she was yeah. just doing some things on the evenings and the weekends. And so you know she brought the idea home to me, and like me, man, like I'm the gas and my wife's the brake. Like uh-huh. you don't have to sell me on anything. I'll just jump and go through this. <laughs> I was like, okay, well let's let's just figure out how to get it done. You know, so just days of uh uh youtubing and googling it the death mm-hmm. man and, and we figured out how to you know get it started and we, we were off to the races <laughs> so you guys started doing the cleaning by yourself you and your wife yeah exactly man yeah we started the yeah yeah we, we started doing it by <laughs> ourselves and doing everything by ourselves and in the beginning it was okay just had a few contracts but when we grew and expanded you know we tried to do four and five you know buildings a night mm. by ourselves you know we just killing ourselves because even yeah. at the time you know we had we both had day jobs right like so you regular you, nine to five jobs exactly you know mm-hmm. so you getting off at, at five o'clock and then six till whenever you yeah. know what i mean mm-hmm. and basically till you finish or you know finish cleaning or finish the buildings or yeah. if anything happens you mm-hmm. still have to get that done so you know you're talking about some nights you know getting home at two three in the morning you know trying to get a little rest you know mm-hmm. maybe snack on something <laughs> and, and so you can get right back up you know the next day to yeah. do it all over again the, we 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 really longed for the for the weekends yeah, <laughs> we, yeah, we yeah. happy to see the weekends come <laughs> that's when you guys got to get your rest how long did you guys yeah. do that before you guys decided to make changes about five months man before before we really just like that's burn intense. Our stuff out and, yeah. yeah so did you guys question whether or not you're going to keep on or what was the next step after you guys figured man we can't keep going like this yeah, we, we knew we well. We definitely didn't want to, you know, give it up. Awesome. I don't. I don't think that was ever a question. But we knew nice. we, we couldn't at the pace that we were doing it. We could do it. So you weren't we going to quit, but it might make you quit. It, like it might punch you in the face a couple times till you guys figure it out. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's going to put some some knots upside your head. It's, it's going <laughs> to do that, you know, anytime. Uh-huh. But um, no, what we did, man, we just went out. We we bought an online course. Mm-hmm. Uh, had some books, reached out to some people that have had a cleaning business before, mm-hmm. just taking in all the information, man, and research that we can, that we could. And uh, what we started to do from there is actually run it and build it like a business. You know, yeah. there's a great person said, you know, that you want to work on your business, not in your business. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And That's that was solid. like one of the, yeah, that was one of the biggest things that like really helped us. So, you know, hiring people getting a few crews in place, getting the inspector to go and, you know, finalize the buildings at night, make sure everything, you know, yeah. is done, done properly. So you had to hire multiple pieces and did you, so you, I'm guessing you had to play a lot of these roles, right? What were some of the roles that you ended up hiring out? And then what did you look for employees in trying to hire these pieces, these parts of your puzzle out? Yeah. So, so definitely uh, a few things that we kept 
uh in-house uh because my wife she loves people mm-hmm. uh so hr and training and uh actually payroll she she loves to do that she's uh, the number like, cruncher yeah yeah oh yeah very very <laughs> <laughs> and you, you give you give her a few dollars she'll bring back change i'm telling nice. you like, like, she, she's one of those uh serial couponers you know you've seen Ooh, them yeah man yeah and they like literally they make have a, a dollar shed. ride oh my goodness we have a shed in our backyard and a quarter of it i mean it's just filled with stuff or whatever mm-hmm. you know, i'm telling you <laughs> so but um and the, the things that I, I primarily do is uh you know growing expanding and pushing the business forward mm-hmm. um you know like with the marketing and things like that right. going out getting the contracts writing uh-huh. up the contracts talking you know kind of being you know face fronting of, of with the the owners or the managers right. who i'm dealing with so prior to you getting into this business did you work with contracts how did you learn to deal with the contract portion and and trying to get people connected i guess on a contract you guys have a recurring operation that you guys go in and out it's not just a one-time gig yeah exactly um and part of that we learned in the online um online course that we bought Mm -hmm. um actually you can actually find them on facebook uh cbn cleaning business network nice Um, okay yeah great great guy and we we did that and i think uh with the cpa that i have uh you know they helped us along too you know with a few contracts you know like a few sticky points or anything like that mm-hmm. yeah but you know we, we got it handled man and, and like i say just those things definitely have to get taken care of but what we like uh hired for was like you know all of the cleaning like that's that's what we hired like the crews for you right know? so okay we, we feel like we can have a little bit of our life back uh-huh. you know <laughs> yeah so what was it like hiring the crews where'd you get where'd you decide that all right this is too much how was the hiring process managed from there when did you decide so on a side hustle, I will say the side side hustles. You're like, all right, you'll ask a friend to come hang out. Hey, I'm about to go clean a clean a building. You want to come do this with me? I've done that before. Hey, I'm about to go clean my gym. You want to come wipe this down with me and see if a friend wants to come along? But I'm guessing for um, for you, you had to f- figure out some way between friends, family, and then making that outright decision to hire people that you may not know yeah exactly so it it went along just how you said it you know that was one of those things we had to you know once again uh take take the bumps on the head with uh learning how to hire and who to hire Mm. uh you know because we started out hey you know friends family uh uh, you know a church member anybody you know somebody i worked with you know if if they said they could sweep a mop hey they they could they could come on you know uh but but we learned that you know those those kind of people like like they they don't last you know um yeah. and and you're just hiring just because of a need yeah and, and, it's, and it's instead of you know hiring for the for the purpose you know yeah. and we would it, it would really bite us in the end because we would have to go back and do it anyway ourselves because it wasn't done right you mm-hmm. know like like i'm not adverse to hard work but one thing i do know you know hard work with the wrong philosophy will still equal frustration. Oh, that's you know true. I mean? So so we say, you know, let's let's head that off and learn who to hire. Um so how and, and, and go ahead. How'd you figure out who to hire? What were some of the, the skills or the character traits that you guys are looking for when you're trying to hire people? Exactly. So and, and the the funny thing about it being on the other side of the table, because I've always been the guy looking for the job, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So now to be on the other side of the table, it felt kind of kind of weird, you know but what we learned is like not so much you know digging into their iq but their eq you know okay. e- emotionally you know yeah. what i mean like can they hot can they handle stress um high you know high stress moments and things like that uh you know if something breaks if this happens if if the the building is actually closed if you get locked out or anything you know mm-hmm. how do you handle those moments right you know what i mean yeah you know so something when we th- some of the yeah. things that really it sounds like the stuff that makes a good person a good person are some of the things you were really looking for yeah yeah we, we were more one, one question that i, I would kind of ask people and it for the most part it was stump people you know what i mean but i just wanted to see there was no right or wrong answer i just want to see what they were thinking mm-hmm. i would i would say okay say that your face is on the billboard mm-hmm. you're on the billboard what does that billboard say you know what i mean and, and they, you know, yeah, they they would sit there, and it's kind of like you know, deer in the headlights, you know, yeah. for for a few for a few seconds, you know what I mean. But I just wanted to see 
how they would think you know like yeah. no wrong answer just what what would it say like what That's would it say about question. you yeah 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 that you probably got a lot of interesting answers but you could you could probably learn <laughs> yeah. a lot from people with that what was yeah. some of the most interesting answers you got if they were able to answer the question at all um actually you know i i've never really got a, a crazy question you know um a lot of people would say uh, i i think the the best one that, that i ever heard i ever heard uh and she she told me um you you would uh it, it would say you know god servant and i know that's, that's kind of simple you know what i mean but mm -hmm. like that really stuck out you know a lot to me like, right you know because you know nowadays you know no i think you, we've lost that word about serving you know mm -hmm. or look at it you know in the negative light but yeah the, the the best ones or the strongest ones are the ones who serve you know right. what i mean and the fact that she kind of you know either even had the mindset to think that way you know or say that 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 you know that showed me a lot of and the crazy thing she's still with us today nice. you know what I mean? <laughs> oh yeah. yeah that's i mean the yeah. people who are there to serve are going to last the longest yeah yeah yes and, and that's what we had to do with, with one thing that we learned uh definitely is that they don't work for us we work for them that's so I got to give philosophy. them exactly or uh, what they need, you know, or, or equip them with what they need, you know, to, mm -hmm. to get the job done. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So with that, you've also started a career in some motivational speaking, right? Tell mm -hmm. me about how you got into motivational speaking, because it, it sounds like being the leader that this is kind of a part of you already. Yeah, well, you know what? As, as some people I'll, I'll always say that, but I think a lot of it, you know, is. It's probably just learned and, and, and picked up. So the way, I don't know, the way I got started in the main, it kind of all intertwines back into even me wanting to be in more shape, mm -hmm. my fitness and, and everything. Uh, the more I started, you know, taking care of myself. Um, and when we started the business, one thing just to upfront realize that you don't know everything and that you need some help. Right. And somebody gave me a book. It was called um, Go For No. I think mean, it was the first book outside of school because other than that, I, man, you couldn't pay me to read, you know, when I was in man, school. Man, I 100% agree with you. Like, you put me in high school. My mom was talking the other day. When did you start reading so much? Well, I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> in high school I, or college, it was not my thing. No, couldn't stand it. But now, love it, you yeah. know. And that book taught me a lot, uh, you know, as far as, like, overcoming obstacles, mm -hmm. overcoming the word no, and not to take it personal, just realizing, you know, that, ordinarily i'd say seven out of ten people are just negative and it's not anything against you they just have something else to do you're right. not the first thing on their mind Oof. they got to get home to the kids they got to get you know they got they got bills to pay right you know spouse or their loved ones this and that or whatever so when you come to them and say hey would you like to do no you're gonna get a no you know what i mean but like <laughs> yeah. is you just have to like learn to keep going you know through those through you know through that yeah uh and after that book just an avalanche, man. I, I went from that book to the next because I was hungry to learn the next thing. And the more and more I realized with learning that I started getting better. You know, I started getting better in my relationship. Mm -hmm. I started getting better as a person. I started, yeah. and, and started getting better on my job and in my business. Mm -hmm. Like we, we love to build up, you know, uh, our, our bank accounts and stuff, you know, you know, our, our, you know, wealth and everything. But there's also, you know, your mental wealth. You know your mental capital your your mental uh bank account you know right. what i mean so yeah. adding to that man and, and learning how to just you know not change but shift you know a lot of people think it's it's a big change that you have to do but it's just really a shift that you have to do uh uh you know to change your mindset and yeah. once i realized what these things were doing to me going to seminars going to training i said everybody needs this everybody should mm -hmm. feel like this you know what i mean everybody should have they should have you know the the the, the power and, and the tools to combat the things that are coming at them and then mm -hmm. I, I say well maybe i can help people with that and after i i started looking at that you know i started out with just you know facebook messages right. you know texting friends you know friends yeah. and family just texting them in the morning like hey you know just want you to know you are enough you are great you are powerful you know have a good day and right. sometimes it would seem like a little thing but you know you would get a text or a message back later on that day saying like how much that helped them and i was like mm. really you know what i mean and it feels it just feels good to 
help somebody, man. Right. You know, it's, it's just or just ornately in your in your soul. It just feels good to help people. So do you go to events and do you talk at events and and do you get hired to do that? What's that process like for you? Have you spoken out yet? So, no, so so as as far as like church, you know, and, and some you know some friend friendly gatherings and things like that. That's that's the most speaking that I've done so far. But right. it's it's you know no, another process, something that I'm I'm working on, you know, with mm-hmm. branding myself and getting up to that level, getting to that spot where I can go, you know, speak yeah. for other people. Yeah, but it's it's coming. It's coming. Good man, that's pretty awesome. You mentioned earlier about getting better as a whole, and you were talking about getting healthier. Right. Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit about that journey. What life was like before you decide? I guess at some point in time, when you say I had to, I have to get healthier, you had to have considered yeah. yourself unhealthy. So tell me yeah. a little bit about why you felt you were unhealthy, and then what that transition was. As you said earlier, that mind shift as to what put you in that healthy spot, that healthy range. So, uh, you know, like you say, when in high school, man, we we played sports. You know, from yeah sun up to sundown and you never think about it because you know we're young and and, you know healthy then you know um but i believe it was it was after college actually Mm -hmm. uh i had like surgery on my feet it was just like correctional surgery you know and and for that time that i was down because the doctor was you know they put you in these little hard flat shoes you Mm -hmm. know you can't bend your feet or anything you can't really walk you know yeah i don't think i'm down for like maybe like six or seven weeks and you don't notice it you're just sitting around sitting in the bed man but i blew up <laughs> and, and I, I was a i was i think the heaviest i got i was like 283. that's and not a I, little bit of weight man no man and it, it was you know even to me it was like you know sickening and i was like i just i don't feel good it wasn't like you know like what i'm thinking about oh i don't look right or this and that or i know no i just didn't feel good you know what i mean yeah and i i just started like I, you know where anybody else would you know i s- stopped eating less of what i was mm-hmm. and you know just worked on getting outside more uh you know walking around more i've always loved lifting right. but you know cardio cardio was never my thing mm. and then um like i say i'm in it you know right yeah yeah i did a cut co- i did a two-year contract in afghanistan and for some reason over there, well, first of all, there's nothing to do, but really just <laughs> do your job and work out and play cards. Right. So I fell in love with running over there, man. And I just would just run all the time. So even when I came back, it was just a, it was like a good habit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like we, we look at habits as when someone says, oh, he has a habit and we think it's automatically negative, but you can have good, good habits. habits right. Habits, you know what I mean? So it was just something that I always kept up with. And it's, you know, different things have come out. Um, uh, I started intermittent fasting. Mm. Uh, I, that that really helped a lot, and it wasn't something that wasn't you know hard or difficult for me. You know, it, it fit my lifestyle. You know what I mean? Yeah. I tell people, you know, I would rather you go in the gym and work out for fifteen minutes and go home rather than try to stay in there and kill yourself for an hour and not and you enjoy go home it. And you'll never come back. Yeah, yeah, you you won't come back because yeah. you're either too sore or you didn't enjoy it. You yeah. know what I mean? And uh, I've even told a buddy before, I said, man, just go to the gym. And he said, well, what do I do? Because I didn't tell you to do anything. Just, just go, go to, to the gym. gym. Walk around in there. Look at the machines. Get you, you know, some uh, water, drink, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Look at the TV. And then go home if you feel like it or whatever. So it's and interesting I, you said that. There's a go- book called Atomic Habits uh, by a guy mm-hmm. named James Clear. He talks about changing a little bit every day. And there's a story in that book about... A guy who just went, just like you said right there, he just went to the gym. He finished work, went to the gym, walked around for a minute or two and left, right? And then after a few weeks, he would walk around, go do an exercise and leave again. And then he kept doing this. And over time, these little habits got bigger and bigger and bigger, just like you're talking about right there. And the the idea of an atomic habit is that habit that gets formed little by little over time like it's just a little bit like one percent better every day one percent more every day one percent more every day so it's kind of the habits you're talking about exactly like one thing uh you look at um maybe athletes or or or, you know people like that when they talk about the difference between you know winning and losing is really small and like Mm -hmm. you say changing you know it's just that small shift that can change something big in your life you know, like the, the average person, you know, me and you, we have like, I can't remember, like like 30 or 40 something thousand thoughts a day. 
Mm-hmm. But did you know only 9% of those thoughts are actually something different? Mm-hmm. That's why, you know, you make it to the end of the day or the end of the week and you always feel like, man, I'm stuck in the same world. Cycle, I'm no doing working. the same things. I thought about the same things or whatever. That's because that's just what your mind is going to do or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that 9%. We can change it. We can affect. So if you can, like I said, you know, think about what you think about. Take inventory on on your mind, in your mind. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Uh-huh. And I think if, if we did that, we pay more attention to, you know, the things that we're letting into our mind. And like you say, that small shift will just like it will literally set you in a different path in your life. Right. Whew. That's pretty fire right there. So going <laughs> going from that shift from unhealthy to healthy you said you were at 280 you decided to just start moving and do cardio but you don't just get up and do go from 280 and just run to do some cardio what were, what were the steps you took to get to the point because i think you said right now you're running 5k you ran yeah. your first 5k at some point in time recently so how'd you get there you don't just hop up and say i'm gonna run a 5k and you hadn't used your foot your feet very well either they were flat right you had them yeah. bound up yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very <laughs> stiff. Um, what, what I did, honestly, was like you say, I just started walking in my driveway. Yeah. Can I make it to the mailbox? You know what I mean? Like you said, those mm-hmm. little things, make it to the mailbox and come back. And, you know, just just that, that competitiveness in yourself, you know, or just wanting to see yourself do better or be better. You know, you'll say, OK, tomorrow I'm going to go twice to the end you know, of the driveway. Yeah. Uh, and like you say, just changing, just changing my nutrition or whatever. It doesn't, you know, people think, oh, for me to get there, I need to start eating clean tonight. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like, no, it's not going to work like that. You can't just change cold turkey. Just how about cut back two hamburgers out of your, you know, out of out your of week. Your day, try, yeah. try that first. You know what yeah. I mean? Maybe just, a, maybe just a half of a handful of potato chips. <laughs> See how that feels. You know what I mean? Just mm-hmm. start to, you know, just scale it back small. And that's really what I did. And over time, it just kept adding up, adding up. Um, and you, you run into those roadblocks or those plateaus. But what, now, one thing I've definitely learned in life and for, for myself is that friction is where growth is. Cool. So it, it, like the harder it gets, right on the other side is what you're trying to get to. You know what I yeah, mean? Like man. if you're realizing something is getting tough or you're getting pushed back, you know, don't say, oh, they don't want me to. Oh, I can't do it. Like, no, like that's when you're you're almost there at the, at the finish line, you know, mm-hmm. or what you're trying to get to. Like, that's when you should like push through even harder. And, and that's what I that's what I did. Ultimately, man, I just kept just kept growing, growing and growing. All right. So you kept growing the little steps, the little steps, little steps. I've also found that you, you've talked about your wife, right? And mm-hmm. it, it takes that person in your corner cheering for you too sometimes. It's not all by yourself, right? You meant you were yeah. you were fortunate to say, or not fortunate, but you said earlier that your wife has been a really key player in a lot of the things that you've been doing lately. Tell me a little bit about that. Tell me about your wife, how y'all met, what that's like, man. I'm a big fan of when you can reach down and say, yeah, man, this is this is my my rock, right? I'm standing on her right now. Exactly, man. Uh, um, so we met at uh, North Carolina A&T. That's uh-huh. where I was going to at the time. And I was actually going to school with her cousin. Hmm. And she said, uh, it was around homecoming week, I believe. And she said, oh, I got the perfect homecoming girl. Homecoming at AT&T. AT&T. Yeah. At A&T. Homecoming, at, <laughs> <laughs> homecoming <laughs> at A&T is fire, man. It's, man, right here. it's, it's bananas, you know. And, and so... Um, she said, oh, oh, yeah, I got the perfect girl for you. And, of course, I didn't believe it because everyone says that. Oh, I got a perfect person for you to meet. You know what I mean? And, you know, she introduced us. And I dare not say it was love at first sight, but it was different at yeah. first sight. Um, right. and, and that's what, like, stuck out to me the, the most. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, even at our first date, she pulled out a coupon. <laughs> and I'm not lying. You know what I mean? Even back in those days, you know, we in college. She pulls yeah. out a coupon. I'm like, and I'm thinking, this girl's weird. You know? What uh-huh. <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah, yeah, you know yeah. <laughs> Nowadays, I love that fact about her. Yeah. Um. And, and and when I say you know different, yeah, I don't. You know, some people may construe it and think like, oh, you know, in in a bad way. I don't mean different in a bad way. I just mean different as what you're not 
accustomed to mm -hmm. you know what i mean like and, and maybe you can share this same sentiment too jason like have you ever gotten a tailor-made suit mm. well and, you not, know yeah. you, not a tailor-made okay. suit but i've got some stuff that's been made specifically for me but i know it go ahead yeah. with it. exactly yeah so when you know you take all the measurements blah 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 yeah. and stuff you know and he says okay come back in a week or two yeah. and i have it ready for you yeah yeah and when you get it back and you try it on and you're like this thing doesn't fit right man yeah. what do you do it's not yeah. right or whatever but yes it does fit right mm -hmm. because it's forcing you or creating you to stand up like yeah. a man mm -hmm. the posture of yeah. a man you've never yeah, had yeah. that type of posture yeah. for you before you've never walked like that before you've never had to talk like that before so what it did was correct so that's how i liken you know her to that or whatever she was yeah. my tailor-made suit you know what i mean mm -hmm. i never had to you know be that man before you know what i mean i didn't yeah. have to stand up tall like no nobody nobody actually forced me and say hey do the right thing and what be your best do mm -hmm. your best. was that your best i don't think so you can do more right and she put that ownership on me and, and you know was really like a like an accountability coach <laughs> you know what <laughs> yeah. i mean and, yeah. and and it forced me to get get you know get better just just in every aspect of my life or whatever mm -hmm. you know what i mean so like i I owe her, you know, like what, what people think they see in me or see of me, the, the credit goes to my parents and, and my wife, because right. that's who you see, you know, a, a lot of the times when you see me. Yeah. Right. You see what they've poured into you and yeah. what the, those parts that you pour out, the good parts of you, you, you uh, are appreciative of the stuff that they've given to you so that you can kind of give that to everybody else. Right. Like mm -hmm. they filled your cup so you can fill everybody else's cup. Yep. Oh, yep. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah. So let's talk about your faith too, man, because one of the cool things I found is that you really, yes, your wife, and then there's God, right? Like God is almost intertwined in almost everything that you post and everything that you're doing. Tell us about that. Yeah. I like it. D deeply, man. I think, you know, when people say, well, how did you get here or what did you get? God, like it's, it's really all in your faith, man. Yeah. You know, like when, you know, building this business, like I say, you know, you get the nose, you get the door slammed in your face. Um, you know, there, there's there's, of course, you know, plenty ups, but you're going to have the downs mm -hmm. and things like that. You know, what are you going to rely on? What are you going to go back to? You know, when it when it gets tough, you know, when you feel like giving up yourself and mm -hmm. that's going to happen mm -hmm. when people are going to counsel on you. And yeah. that's going to happen when they say they're going to be there and they don't show up. Uh, e even when people tell you, why don't you just give up and do something else? All of those things are going to happen or whatever, you know, you have to have, you know, like a strong faith or something, you know, really anchored. You know what I mean? They yeah. will always rely you to, you know, or, or allow you to, to get back up. You know? Yeah, that, that's why I, I'm, I'm really big on. I'm really big on man like drive and being mm -hmm. driven. Like motor, I just like, and it's funny, you know. Yeah, I, I, I'm a motivational speaker, you know what I mean. Yeah. But that's 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 the message, in between the message that I want to rely, that I want to relate to people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Motivation is good. Mm -hmm. it, it will inspire you. Get pumped. You say, yeah, I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna do this or whatever, you know. But as soon as it rains, <laughs> as soon as as soon as the phone rings and you get a bad call, yeah. It, as soon as you know your your spouse gets on your nerves and irritates you as soon as you know your, your your children put a hole in your tv your big screen tv or whatever you know well do do you still feel like doing those same things you said you was gonna come home and do mm -hmm. and motivation will go out the window but a driven person will still do those things or whatever you know what i yeah. mean and mm -hmm. faith gives me that drive you, you know, know what i mean it gives me that ultimate unrelenting drive that i say it's it's not about if I'm going to get it. It's when I'm going to get it done. Right. You know, I will get it done. Yeah, mm, that's that's powerful stuff. And you've also mentioned uh, earlier talking about your wife's empowerment conference. Mm -hmm. Then you talk about reading books and yep. and self studying. And mm -hmm. every entrepreneur knows you can't just hop out and be an entrepreneur. There's going to take some form of education, whether it's it might not be the college education that everybody's going to assume it's going to be, but you're going to take in some knowledge and information. What are some books or some resources that you would offer or suggest that a young entrepreneur may look into to kind of help 
with some guidance or uh, some insight to what it's like to either run a business or um, become a better person or something that may be a, a hireable person, it, even not even an entrepreneur, but even an employee. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the first books, and, and people don't think about it yet, the Bible is the best motivational book yeah. ever written. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, if if that can't teach you anything, like then I, it, it, you, you might be lost. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So so for, first and foremost, like like I would say, you know that. Um, but definitely, man, like there's so the, the resources are never ending or whatever yeah. you know. Like and, and things I, I I looked out for uh, guys like uh, Jim Rohn, mm-hmm. uh, Zig Ziglar, mm-hmm. Les Brown. Those mm-hmm. are just like a few. Those that, are the classic kinda, guys. Yes. The classic yes. guys. Yes. And I, I just latched on to them, man, and read as much as I could, listen to it all day or whatever. Like, and that's really one thing that I've done. Like, even when I go running or yeah. working out, a lot of the times it may not even be music I'm listening to. I'm listening to an audible book. Oh, or yeah. I'm listening to another motivational speaker. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Um, because the power is in the tongue. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, listening to stuff like that can speak strength and speak power speak right. good and oh you know even I, I tell people man even just between you and your family or whatever you know speak positivity yeah man. over kids or over your spouse and to them or whatever and tell them hey you're great you're wonderful we're great you know what i mean yeah we're, we we love to love on people we love to help people you know what i mean yeah you're, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. a helper you know what i mean it's things like that or whatever and like just it's contagious you know what i mean that just positive like energy is contagious you know what i mean yeah exactly if you tell somebody like hey i like those shoes they may turn back around they don't even know you and say hey well i, I like that jacket you got on or whatever you know what i mean uh-huh. because it it just felt natural to give that give a compliment right back right back you know what i mean yep. so yeah i mean that's pretty good stuff man i really appreciate you taking the time and come and talk to us over here on the speak strength podcast and you like coming you. and speaking strength and the people that are going to listen man i really appreciate that especially being able to catch up over the over this last 20 years man yeah, <laughs> yeah. uh keep doing what you're doing man and, and keep speaking strength into your community and into your employees uh, is there anything that you'd like to close out with before we finish up um not much man just just saying you know once again thank you and really for you man keep doing what you're doing because this you, is i'm telling you is i know it's helping somebody i know thank it's you. blessing somebody um it is wonderful me for me to even be a part of this like you know i'm honored for this in this uh opportunity man so I keep really doing appreciate what you're doing that. yes sir yes sir so hopefully you guys got a lot of good nuggets coming out of mr edwin beeks if you guys have any questions please feel free to check us out on instagram go ahead and give us your instagram handle oh it's uh mr inspired yeah so then, uh, <laughs> yeah all right now listen and, he said mr inspire i'm gonna need you to spell that for everybody because you can't yeah, just yeah, spell I, that regularly I, I was just about to say what so it's mr like m r or whatever then it's i n s p y r e Good stuff. Mr. Inspire, you can catch me at J underscore Winley. Thank you guys for watching the Speak Strength Podcast. We'll catch you guys next time.